Hi there. That was a treat, wasn't it? Beethoven in many guises. Well, um, hi and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory and we meet here every Thursday. We've done it all year. And this is going to be, as they used to say about uh, sitcoms when I was a teenager, a very special Draw With Me. Uh, and that's because I'm not even sure if we're actually going to draw together. Although I would say you might want to have um, something to take notes on handy because it's going to be more of a note-taking, possibly, kind of interaction. You decide. But Draw With Me um, is basically an opportunity to get together and be creative, hang out, do some drawing, have a conversation, um, you know, share ideas, experiences, news, whatever. So um, today is our very last episode. We can't squeeze another one in. This is it. It's the very last Thursday, the very last day of the blighted year of 2020 on a domine. So um, it's nice to see all of you, some new folks, um, people from all over. We've got Natalie from Switzerland, Debbie from Missouri, and Fiona from South Africa, and many others. So Chris points out that his sketchbook is his notebook, and that is good. It's good to have your sketchbook be your notebook, because then you carry it around with you. Then you're not precious about it. So you can have an amazing drawing of, uh, I don't know, your dirty laundry right next to a list that reminds you to pick up detergent. And your sketchbook becomes your friend, your companion. And that way, wherever you go, even though we don't go anywhere these days, wherever you go in the house, you have your sketchbook with you and ready to draw in it. So that's key. That's key to the whole idea. Um, what is going on here? Well, there's this. Um, my studio is coming together. And uh, I'm having some help here from my loyal hound. Well, she's not that loyal. She's not really a hound. She's a pug. Yes. But uh, there's just a few boxes left to unpack, mainly of books. This is actually a box of books that we have to ship out for people who signed up for Spark, and we said we would send them a signed copy of Draw you, of uh, Shut Your Monkey, and I haven't yet signed them or shipped them, but we will soon. And uh, Twiglet is going to remind me of the importance of doing that, right? Yes, indeed. So, um, yeah, and you can see some of my shelves are empty here, but we, we don't even have bookcases, so I don't even know what we're going to do. We might end up having to put a bunch of books and in boxes into the garage. Painful. You know, because we went through all this trouble of, like, sifting through all of our books before we packed up from New York to come out here to Phoenix. Uh, and then I was going through the boxes of books a couple of days ago, and I was like... I actually don't really care about some of these books. In fact, quite a lot of them. It's painful to say because I love old books. But some, I don't know, if I had my Desert Island book selection, my studio book selection, ah, I might have to uh, pare it down. So it's cool. It's all good. Uh, you can always replace books. Not sketchbooks, but you can, repl you can always go and within a few days you can get just about any book that you want replaced. So, John says, careful of condensation in garages. I wish there was condensation in this desert in which I live, but absolutely good idea. Uh, there's nothing worse than sort of mildewy, manky old books. So, all right, let's go through just a little bit of, um, you know, announcement-y kinds of things. You know, for those of you who are new here, Every Friday, I write an essay. I know that some of you have never gone and signed up to be on my email list. Beats me why. Honestly, it is, uh, it is free. It is sometimes illuminating. Um, it is, you know, judging by the number of responses that I get from emails, it's amazing how many people write back to me after I write one of these emails on Friday. Um, I guess people like them, and they're thought-provoking. So that's interesting and good, and my goal. So uh, this is what I've been doing for most of this year. 
Haven't missed one, have I? Nope, I haven't missed one. So I'm proud of myself for that. Quantity over quality. That's my motto. It's carved into the uh, Gregory coat of arms in Latin. Maximus over qualitatus. Anyway, it's been a while since I've studied Latin, but anyway. Um, yes, so please sign up by going to bit.ly slash dannysesses.com. Don't forget that sess. There's much sess in there. So also, if you're not an email type person, but you're a phone, more phone oriented, you're watching this on a phone right now, I'll text you. If you're living on the continent of North America above the Mexican border, for some reason, I don't know, it's never come up. Maybe nobody in Mexico cares. But anyway, if you're in North America, if you're in the United States or in Canada, and you'd like to text me, and I would certainly like to text you. And I will text you yeah, all kinds of junk. Pictures of my dog, pictures of my drawings, stuff that I find that I think is kind of interesting. Reminders. Did I do it this morning, actually? Damn it, I didn't. I usually email people about Draw With Me and say, hey, don't forget, Draw With Me. And then I forgot to remember to remind you. So anyway, one more resolution to add to the list of things. But normally I send out various kinds of notifications. So sign up for that. Why not? Again, I won't harangue you. There's no, in neither of these messages, neither my email list nor this thing is really like a marketing thing. It's not. It's just me wasting my time and yours with thoughts and junk and stuff. Of fun. Um, also, those Beethovens that we had at the beginning, those were drawn, not last week because we didn't have one, but two weeks ago a draw with me. And generally what we do is we collect all of the Beethovens or shoes or drawings of Twiglet or whatever it is that people have done that week. And we put them together and put them in the intro of this program. Um, but if you would like to share what you've done with me or with others, Post it on social media and put hashtag SBS Draw with me. Or post it on the schoolyard at Sketchbook School. And so you can do it on Facebook, you can do it on Instagram. And that way we will be able to see it. Okay, um, I also want to tell you about an exciting thing that's coming up, which is this new workshop that we're doing called Watercolor Magic. And it's a, it is, magic is not an understatement. Not hocus pocus, but real, the ability to do magical things with watercolors you know i've been doing watercoloring for quite a while i started out by basically using watercolors as colors kind of you know like crayons coloring in stuff drew a man in a red shirt watercolor in his red shirt but over time you know as i looked at watercolor i thought boy it's actually an incredibly expressive medium um it is it is a medium that has a life of its own because part of it is almost beyond your control. It, there are interesting things that happen with, with pigments and with paper and how water brings them together that is really amazing and interesting. It's a fantastic medium, particularly for people who love sketchbooks like I do. However, there's also a lot of mystery involved. And it's not as straightforward as it first might appear. And for some people, that's challenging and daunting even. And they say, I just can't manage watercolor. It gets away from me. So my friend David Pyle, he is really, he's a new addition to Sketchbook School, but he's now been part of two of our Q and Art Lives because he knows so damn much about art supplies, every aspect of them. And he's also an incredibly good explainer of stuff. He's, he's got great energy. He's really funny. He's very lively, but he also explains things in really clear terms. It's interesting because he has a degree in chemistry, or he almost has a degree in chemistry. I think he dropped out of the chemistry program, went into art, but he knows all about like molecular constructions. Not that it's boring and, you know, all that stuff, but that it helps to explain things. For those of you who are at the the marker Q and art that we did, he explained things about how markers and how uh, pigments and dyes work differently with each other and with paper. And he literally had little um, uh, 
models of the chemicals. He's not going to be doing that in watercolor magic, although I'm sure he will explain some of this stuff. But what he is going to do is he's going to explain why is it that one kind of red behaves completely differently from another? How is it that you can mix colors um, in ways that are vibrant and um, beautiful, and yet other times you can mix very similar colors and get mud? Um, what is the way that you keep your you can keep your watercolors feeling fresh and alive? It's something that we've touched on a bit in Watercolor Rules, our amazing course, particularly the parts that were taught by Ian Sidaway. But David is going to go much more deeply into it. At first, honestly, we talked about making this a two day workshop because he has he knows so much. Um, but we've managed to cram it all into one really action packed. Um, um, workshop. And it's not just going to be theoretical at all, far from it. He's going to explain exactly how to lay out your palette, how to mix different colors, how to use um, your brushes, all, all kinds of aspects of watercolor. And then he's going to paint a really beautiful landscape. He's an incredible plein air painter. He, I mean, he, the guy can draw and paint anything. Um, and he's, he often goes out in the street and paints. And before he comes home, somebody's bought the painting right off his easel. So he's uh, just a wonderful painter. So all around, this is going to be an incredible workshop. I'm really excited about it. And uh, it's going to be on January 9th. So you have, you have, not this weekend, but the following weekend to sign up for it. So I would say no matter what you've done with watercolor, uh, you need this class. I know I do. I know I'm really looking forward to it because there's an awful lot to learn and I want to take my watercolors to the next level. If you're a member of Spark, um, our membership program, you get a discount and uh, that's all good. It's one more reason to be there. So, all right, so that's coming up. Let me just show you what uh, David is, let me show you David and how he explains what this workshop is all about, okay? Hi, I'm David Pyle. I get to do something with this class, Watercolor Magic, that we're teaching on Sketchbook School, that I've wanted to do for years. So we're gonna focus not only on making a great painting in a fabulous location, but we're gonna talk about how different materials enhance your process. We're gonna talk about different pigments in different colors and how they can mix to give you control over your values, to help you with different textures in the painting. We're gonna talk about great brushes, great papers, and all of this is not only gonna help you with this particular painting, but they'll help you with your expressive process and every painting that you make afterwards. I can't wait to start. I see Stephanie's asking whether this is for beginners or intermediate folks. You know, it's probably pretty good for beginners. I would say learning the fundamentals properly from the beginning is great. I think it's very much going to be helpful for people who are more advanced, who are intermediate, because it's telling you how do you solve those problems that you've encountered in watercolor, you know? It's not yellow plus red equals, what does it recall? It's not that rudimentary. Um, it's not what is a wash, although I'm sure he'll go into that to some extent. So I would say it's one of those things where no matter what level you are, you'll get an enormous amount out of it. And if you don't, you're horribly disappointed for some extremely strange reason, you can always write to us and say, that was not for me, and get your money back. It's true of everything at Sketchbook School. You get your money back. And if there's a lot of information in this workshop, you want to go back over it? You can because we're going to record it and you'll have access to that recording afterwards. So uh, even if it doesn't fit your schedule, you can watch it afterwards. And we also have a feedback session the next day. So you can ask David questions throughout the workshop and at the end of it. And then you can also ask him questions and show him what you did, show him your painting and say, what, do you, what should I have done about this or that? So overall, I think this is the weekend, or not this weekend, but the following weekend, that will transform your watercoloring. That's the idea behind it. That's why we do these workshops, for you to take quantum leaps in your learning. Okay, uh, it's now quarter past the hour. I wanna talk about this past year. It's been an extraordinary year. Um, my wife and I were just talking about this in the kitchen. It's been a horrible year, but there've been good things in it. 
strangely. Hopefully even, no matter how horrible your year was, I hope that you were able to find joy in some things. Maybe in making art, maybe in draw with me, I don't know. But one of the things that I did in the last couple of weeks in the spirit of rumination, uh, recollection, uh, assessment, was to look back at every episode of Draw With Me and its pandemic counterpart, Live Drawing Party, that we've done in 2020. We've done over 50 hours of live streaming. 50 hours. That doesn't include what Kosha did on Instagram. So 50 hours of drawing. Hopefully you've done even more than that, but that's what we've done together. Um, we did, I think, 70 episodes or more. Just a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So I want to look back on it, and I want to say, what was this year like when it came to drawing together? It was pretty, incre pretty incredible. It was pretty incredible for me to watch through all of this stuff and to pick the highlights for you and to say, remember when we did this? It's also interesting to look at the progression because there's sort of like a few episodes at the beginning of the year when, frankly, I was a little tired of, I don't know, Draw With Me was just like not that exciting to me at that point. That's not true. That's not true. That's unfair. I've always been excited by it, but it didn't have the meaning that it came to to develop over the year. It was one, one of many things that I was doing. Uh, and then suddenly the pandemic hit and literally in a matter of a week, we suddenly started doing it every day. And we did the live drawing parties every single day, every morning I would do it. And then we kind of toned it back, dialed it back to a couple times a week. And then eventually we settled back into the weekly thing that we've could do it now. There's all kinds of interesting um, production challenges that happened over the course of the year. I was filming it in all kinds of weird places with all kinds of weird equipment. I was using iPads. I was Sometimes the sound was atrocious. It was filmed in hotel rooms. It was filmed in hallways. There were dogs barking. There were lawn blowers going. There was all kinds of stuff that interrupt, interrupted the process. But overall, I would say it was really an amazing year and I'm so glad that we got to spend it together. And I don't know how much of it you were part of, um, but if, the reason I su suggested that you have note-taking paraphernalia with you is because we covered so many prompts and ideas for drawing. And it would be, I think, useful to you, it certainly was to me, to have kind of a, a just a group of ideas so that when you say to yourself well, what how am I gonna what am I gonna do to what am I gonna draw where am I gonna take my art looking back at some of these will inspire the, some new ideas for you um, or even just writing down the list of prompts because we began draw with me was doing prompts we had 101 prompts and we were doing each week we would do a prompt but then after a while, I kind of went in different directions, and I was pulling classes and lessons from the Sketchbook School Library, and then I was bringing in other artists, and we were doing stuff, and then it kind of, it's also gone through, like, times that were quite personal and were reflections of life, and so all kinds of things were going on. And, uh, oh, I see Kosha's here. Kosha, of course, um, was crucial to so much of this stuff. She was doing these wonderful um, Instagram Live episodes at the same time that I was doing them. She was doing Draw Tip Tuesdays. So it was, and I didn't include that stuff in this because there's, it would just have been insane. But anyway, so what I want to show you is a summary of this year. And uh, let's look back, as, as we say, at uh, drawing together for the last year. I'm going to keep doing that until I no longer suck. Until I'm ready to start sucking at something else. Maybe what I'm going to suck at next is marine animals. I suck at drawing marine animals. Was, oh no, I know what I had. I had black velvet slippers that had skull that had skulls embroidered in silver thread on the front of them. I'm going to keep that my fingers the same distance 
and I'm going to measure three, four. So that height of that building, that piece of building there, is one quarter. Let me see if I got that right. Two, three, four. I did. Yeah, so we went from living in this house with these servants to living on a kibbutz and being basically like manual laborers. And uh, that was our house. That was our kind of scene. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22. Whew. And here, of course, is the Green Hornet, the famous vigilante. I think began as a radio personality, radio character. Wow. We should go and get a job at a pen company. I mean, illustration was pen illustrations. I think our jobs are busy enough as it is. I guess that's true. <laughs> if anybody from the Department of Treasury or more specifically the Secret Service, which oversees forgery, um, you will know that I in no way intended to make an actual bank note. This has become tedious. I'm sure it's become tedious for you to sit here watching a grown man draw a tweed on a Campbell soup can. I mean, this is about as, as dull as it gets. So thank you for putting up with it for as long as you did. We want to keep you company in a safe way, of course. And we want to make some art because making art makes you feel better. Art supplies wise, I am uh, somewhat bereft because um, when we went on this vacation, I took my iPad because that's what I've been drawing on of late. And uh, so now I'm kind of scrounging around for office supplies. I was thinking you could maybe draw the sole of a running shoe, but then I thought, well, that is a little predictable. So, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this page. I actually, I, I actually I don't really say, like I, it. I love that page. I love, I love you the do? contrast of the big contour drawings and then the smaller, deeper. Th I think it's mm. great. I, th I do. You undressed yourself and put everything out there. That's nice. Oh, you, th you, there's, you thought I was going to draw it on me? Is this drawing a metaphor for what I'm talking about? A combination of dark and light? Perhaps it is. <laughs> kind of looks like a pig. But it feels like a car like, <clears throat> driving right at you, right? We're kind of like this weird commune of middle-aged people. Sitting at our computers all day, drinking beer in the early evening, playing cards. And now we're going to have household duties. Maybe we can get, make one of those chore wheels. <laughs> it's a funny idea. I just thought of that. That is a work of art. Um, yeah? <laughs> you look actually a lot like my grandfather. <laughs> I spent part of the morning thinking, uh-oh, this is it. Shortness of breath, putting my hand to my forehead a lot to see if I was getting a temperature, all those kinds of fun things. And then um, I did some vigorous exercise. I made a vigorous film for you. I did a bunch of work. And by dinner time, remarkably, my COVID-19 had receded and I was fine. There's, there's probably something uh, in my mind where uh, I want to find again uh, this uh, ju juvenile uh, pleasure I had uh, to draw uh, when I was a kid uh, at school. I think I've gotten a bit too complex in the last few days, what with lots of videos and interviews and kind of incomprehensible drawing assignments. And so I'm going to try at least in the meantime to be clearer and simpler and focus more on drawing. I'm probably going to be continuing to blather through the whole thing. Can't help myself there. That's it. That's me today. That was interesting. I, I, I didn't think that that's what was going to happen, but it did. 
I was outraged to find out that my niece had signed up for somebody, some other company's online watercolor class. I was like, what? Are you serious? There, there are other people who teach watercolor lessons online? Didn't even know there was such a thing. I thought we invented that. But no, it turned out she had. She was like, oh yeah, I, oh yeah, I forgot that you guys do that. I said, okay, good. You're out of the will. I think they call it sfumato. Is that what it's called? That's, you know, you see it in, it's like in Da Vinci paintings. That's when I think I first encountered that idea of things are further away through the atmosphere and they tend to become cooler. That's quite a big... Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Stick, yeah, only stick to plants, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this is quite inspiring already, so... We thank God for procreate because it is, I mean, if you have to, if you have to be without anything, but if you can only have a desert island tool, boy, give me this. That last line that I added just messed the whole perspective up. I was like, I nice that. one. I thought so, you were perfect. Um, I bet this guy never imagined that a hundred artists would be sketching him. It's true. Actually, there are 352 artists right now sketching him. I wonder if this guy is still available for adoption. Probably not. I'm sure by now. He's found a home. Ha! Huh. As I've said to you several times here, the reality of um, our present moment is something that we can explore and understand through drawing. And that's why I think making self-portraits every week is helpful. I can. I can. I think that pretty well gives us a finished little painting. From all it of does. us here, happy painting. I'm glad. Bless. Wait, I'm not done. Oh my God. That was hard. How great was she? How amazing when her voice came out. And I just love the look of her and those glasses. They were just beautiful. Again, it doesn't matter if it's good. Nobody needs lots of really good drawings of freeze frames from TV. That's not the point. The point is just exercising and getting it going. Okay, that's I think part of the, the trick of this is how do you not make yourself look like you are either, you know, that you don't have uh, what they call resting bitch face. Yeah, and there's a certain adrenalized, adrenal, adrenalized quality to doing this kind of drawing because you never know what's going to happen. Do you think that there's like a genetic component to our drawings, like that that, I, that our drawings are similar? I think they're pretty different, though. They are pretty different, no. And so, then I just oh, wonder, like, if anybody looked at them, they'd be like, oh, yeah, they're definitely related. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, give yourself a break, and if you need one, and failing that, go out and... Uh, be a missionary for art and for art making. Comfort, familiar. That's what the monkey wants. That's what that part of our brain wants that says, you know what, when things are terrifying, just give me the familiar, the safe. You know what I'm gonna say next, right? That is problematic. Is it hope being overshadowed by darkness? I don't know, I'm sure you art history majors will be glad to provide an explanation for me. You are therapists. Can maybe, if you can be bothered, can feel like you can dissect it. But for me, it's just an urge, a feeling, that I want to keep pecking away at these shoes. And Jack said, I'm going to be a painter. And the, the neighbor kind of looked at me. Very small, small motion, like, hmm. 
And, and I just kind of looked back at him blankly. You know, I didn't go like, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. Less is better. It's a difficult, it's a good mantra. It's a very difficult one to live with. Less is better. Because so often, just coming up with more is, it's easier, right? It's easier to go shopping. It's easier to, I mean, not these days, but in general, it's easier to just go out and get something else. I mean, this is a problem we often have with art making, right? I spent three days in bed. My wife spent four or five days in bed, and we continued to be kind of plagued with it for the better part of a month afterwards. You might say, you know what, there's a lot of talking, Gregory, but how about getting on with the actual drawing? Fair enough. Fair enough, that's what you paid for. When you stand back and look at it from afar, um, you start to get a sense of the balance and see like what is, what is, um, what needs adjustment. This might be so, so um, big that we can't just walk away from it. But we're trying. We're playing golf. We're going to restaurants. But then, if you hang out for a little bit, you start to say, okay, uh, I think it's time I have to go home now because my, I'm starting to get uncomfortable. Um, not because of the conversation, but because of the furniture. I could, I could sing that down. I could sing that song. Last year. Misty watercolored memories. I love it. I love that song. It's so cool. One, two. So, yeah, so that's my page that represents 107 days since I left home. This might be the, my favorite drawing that I've done for an incredibly long time. I need to be, I need alone time, people, to actually do the writing. All right, I'm not getting any happier with my drawing, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> it's, it's becoming more depressing. Marley is more of like a hassock. If you imagine uh, like a 45-pound ottoman covered with fur. Catchers have been prepared for this moment for a long time, right? Catchers, get it? It's a joke. Catchers, they wear masks. What, do you want me to take a picture again? Not again. That sounds more like the king of Greece. Who is another king, by the way? King of Greece, who I didn't deal with. I really just was so, he was so boring. I mean, come on, Greece. The guy wasn't in a toga. He was just like in a cheap Banana Republic suit. And I thought, you know what, you're not getting, you're not getting the royal treatment from me. Car, motorcycle, bus, truck. Still my favorite. Or is the fact that this, this guy's looking now, looking at him, he's actually looking kind of sinister, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say they got better as I went along, but... Um, they happened, right? So we all got some drawing done. That's the whole point. Hey, you're drawing. Could you do a portrait of the entire family, maybe in oil on black velvet that maybe is like six feet tall and uses mainly blue so it'll go with that new couch of ours? Could you? Yeah, we'd need it next week. Yeah, that'll, that'll suck the fun out of it. Here we go. Interesting. Six drawings in five minutes, ten minutes. Feeling a little verklempt. She's still a bit too cute. She's a bit too cute. Yes! Furcula. I was afraid that this would betray the inaccuracy of my drawing. Wait a minute, you don't have, you don't have a furcula. Oh, yes, I do. It's right there. Um, but then I realized it, it's the end.
This is the end of my sketchbook. Yeah. But here's a thing to think about. Say he didn't kill himself. And I don't mean, say, somebody else killed him. Say he didn't kill himself, and he survived. I'm pretty happy with this page. Let's have a look at the whole thing. There you go. That's my page of giving thanks. All the things that I've been thankful for this year. When, you, when you're in New York, you're surrounded by stores and, you know, stuff. So it's harder to feel like it's truly yours in some ways. And sure enough, that place isn't mine anymore. It's not necessarily the way you, you look when you're having a conversation or, you know, when you look in the mirror to brush your teeth. That marker turns into watercolor. Amazing. Super cool. That's a lot of stuff, people. That was a lot of stuff that we did together. It was a hell of a year. And uh, I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of uh, the fact that we did this every week, sometimes every day. Um, and I'm just, uh, you know, here's looking at you, 2020. And we're really looking forward to seeing the back of you. So you've driven me to drinking at uh, 1037 in the morning, among other things. Um, but, you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been part of this. Thanks to all of uh, the Sketchbook School instructors who joined in. I mean, it was so great to see France and Le Pen and Ian and Gigi and Jean-Christophe. And just, I'm so lucky to have all these folks as my friends. And Kosha, of course. Kosha, who, um, you know, has been obviously was co-founder of Sketchbook School, has been part of all the amazing things that we've done. She took over Draw With Me a few times. Um, and, you know, I'm so glad that you're my friend and that we will always be friends. So that is really nice. Um, Morgan took over Drawing Ears, but also Morgan, you know, is, is such an essential part of Sketchbook School. And, and of Spark, she's running Spark like a, a finely tuned machine. Uh, JJ, who has been, well, obviously part of my life, part of my quarantine and part of Sketchbook School as well, and has been so essential to everything that, um, that we've been doing and to my life. She's my wife. Uh, Twiglet has joined the cast recently. Um, you know, there's just so many people who've been part of this. And most of all, you, you've shown up. You know, maybe you didn't come to all of them. I didn't come to all of them either, as, as you could see. Um, but we've done a lot of drawing together, and it's been really fun. And it's kept me on track through these hard times. Kept me focused, kept me making stuff. I think, uh, oh, here she is. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think uh, I've made probably more art this year than I've ever made. So... Oh, you were sleeping? Yeah, still sleepy. Still sleepy. Um, so yeah, so it's been it's been a hell of a year, and thank you all for being part of it. And soon it'll be 2021. In a matter of hours. Maybe some of you are actually across the date line already. Um, lucky you. So 2021 will be behind us, and um, we will start drawing together again next year. We'll be thinking of new things to draw. We'll be, maybe we'll even be going outside to draw next year. That will be fun. Do some urban sketching. Do some other stuff. It'll be all. It'll be a lot of fun. So, thank you again for being part of this. If you are a member of Spark, I will see you at the after party, and we'll continue to talk about this. And we'll do some drawing then. I promise. We didn't do any drawing today here, but we will do some drawing. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you for being part of Draw With Me for this year. Let's do it again next Thursday, whenever that is, if, I, if we're still around. Bye-bye, <laughs> and uh, 
Have a great uh, New Year's Eve. Hope you're going to do something a bit fun. I know I am. I'm starting to drink right now. See you then.